Let's take a look at the details of the RT main VI of the RTQ's LabVIEW project. Taking a look at the overall structure, we see that at the beginning of the VI, the very first things that happen is the queue is created. And then after that, in the first process, 10 elements are enqueued. There's a pause, and then 12 elements are dequeued. Another pause, and then the queue is released and destroyed. From that same queue reference, we see that the queue can be observed by the process number three. Process number two does not have a direct link to that queue reference, but after a little bit of a wait, it obtains the queue by name. It enqueues a single element and then releases that queue, waits for a bit, and then repeats, but this time enqueuing the element at the top of the queue. Here's the lab view queues operation sub palette. Do a right click, select synchronization, and then queue operations. In particular, I draw your attention to these elements. Obtain and release queue, and queue and dequeue element, as well as enqueuing the element at the opposite end, and then finally get queue status. Each one of these functions is used in this VI. Let's get into the details by taking a look at the original creation of the queue. The obtain queue function accepts an optional string for the name and then it requires an element to be wired so that the element data type can be specified. Once that queue has been created, the queue reference is passed by wire to other operations or other functions such as enqueue element. In this case, I'm sending in the loop index as part of this for loop, so it enqueues 10 elements. DQ works to remove elements from the queue, and in this case, I'm displaying that as a front panel indicator. You can also enqueue elements directly at the top of the queue. An alternative way of getting the queue reference is by name. Once the named queue has been identified, you'll notice that you do not need to make reference to that wire directly, but rather refer to it by name. Of course, the names should be the same. You need to specify the data type. And then I've intentionally set create if not found to false. That way, if you accidentally mistype the name, it will not create a new queue. It's important to realize that this queue reference wire and this queue reference wire are not the same values. This is actually a new reference that's been created. That's why it's important to release that reference once you're done with it. For diagnostic purposes, it oftentimes is useful to observe the queue status, and you can even look at the elements inside the queue. I'm using get queue status for the purpose, feed in the queue reference, and then I've enabled the option to return those elements as an array and then displaying that on the front panel. I'm using the clear error functions to look for the possibility of error code number one, which signifies that the queue no longer exists because it has been released and destroyed.